Morning. Good morning. It's a bit weird at this time of year, up here in the far north of beyond the wall. North Pole. Yeah. One minute, it's kind of sunny and it feels a little bit warm and you think that spring's on the way. Yes. And then the next minute, it it's starts snowing. blowing a hoolie and my titties pop out like rabbits. Just... <laughs> you can't say that. Got to be careful what I wear. What? Now, it's all right for us because when it gets a little bit colder, we can just put on a nice woolly cardigan. Yes. And turn the eating up a little bit and go inside. Yeah. But it's a bit more tough for the bees because mm. they're starting to run out of all the honey that they stored up last year to get them through the winter. There's brood on the way, new baby bees, and they want to get out and start foraging. Now, again, it's easier for us because if we want to go foraging, we just sit on the sofa and open the Tesco app and start foraging online, don't we? <laughs> Ooh, chocolate fingers, a pound a packet. We'll have five of those. <laughs> yeah, we do. But it is different for the bees. It's a funny time of year for them because they're going through a lot of food, but they need food, but there's not a lot of food about, and the weather is literally changing every five minutes. It is. So it's difficult for them to get out and bring in the pollen and the nectar that they need. And there's not a lot of nectar out there at the moment. On the positive side, I'm thinking it's going to be a better year. Well, for the bees, I think it's going to be a busier year for us. It's going to be a worse year for us. Last year, all but three of the colonies were new. So they had to build all the comb on the foundation frames in the brood boxes and in the supers before they even started storing the honey. They did. Now this year, that's already done. So they don't need to do that. All they need to do is go out and find the nectar and the pollen and raise new bees. And there's already a lot more bees in the hives now than there was when I got them. It's gonna be busy, I think, for us, and we're gonna need to make some changes. There's a lot of bees and honey on the way. Now, what I'm trying to do is get on top of everything now before it gets really busy. Yes. And so we're not panicking and trying to find hives and build them. We've got about four new beehives to build, and I've probably got about 30 of these to build. These are Supers. Supers, I nearly clocked you down. Nearly got me then. Now the barn behind us is what, we've dark been, hole. is what we've been using to build all the bee stuff. Yes. But we've only been using half of it, that half. And as you can see, it's really packed and there's not much room to move, never mind make new beehives. So today the plan is, is the bees or the bee equipment and building stuff is going to take over the whole of this barn. Yes. It used to have half, we're going to have the other half as well. Yeah. So what that means is we're going to build a new bench to build all the beehives and supers. And that's a good opportunity because the old one's a little bit high and a little bit shallow. And yes, because we're getting on a bit, when you're building hives, we're having to kind of hammer up here and it kind of hurts us arthritic bones, doesn't it? It's awful. You're an arthritic bone. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to crack it. Well, Sean's going to crack on and convert the other half uh, into a new workbench so that we can start building beehives and supers uh, ready for the rush from the bees. Yes. And I, while he's doing that, are going to go and check on the bees. <laughs> Just lately, it's felt like the winter was never going to end. I know we live in the highlands of Scotland, but surely spring's got to come at some point. I think this year, I can't remember a day when temperatures have got out of single digits, and I'm talking Celsius for those that still work in Fahrenheit. But just lately, the last couple of days, as you can see, the sun's not only made an appearance, but the winds have fallen light, and today it's 14 degrees Celsius. And you can probably see a bumblebee just hovering around me, which is very on topic because it's the first day of the year when I've been able to come up to the apiary and I'm gonna be able to open up the hives and have a look inside and give all the colonies a good inspection for the first time of 2024. It was only a couple of weeks ago, I was up here hefting the hives, checking how much weight there was in each one. And that told me how much honey the bees had in each hive to sustain them through the winter. There was plenty of weight in most of them, 
but today about a third of them are really light and I've learned just how quick those stores can start to dwindle as you get towards the end of the winter. Only about four of them are still really heavy. Until there's enough natural forage for the bees to go out and collect and bring back to the hive, I'm having to supplement them with these blocks of fondant. It's basically just sugar, baker's fondant. Uh, this weighs about a kilo, which is uh, just over two pounds, and we wrap it up in this kind of cling film. As you can see, this is the, the one that we gave them a couple of days ago, and there's absolutely nothing left of it. So they're going through one of these blocks every two or three days at the moment. If I didn't supplement them with this fondant at this time of year, the colony would eventually die. They'd just die of starvation. Uh, luckily, with weather like this, the gorse flower, which there is plenty of gorse around the highlands, uh, is really starting to come out. So at least the bees have got something to go out and start foraging. Hopefully, uh, the weather stays like this and they're not gonna need this for much longer. I'm really glad that I made the choice of treating all the new colonies last autumn for Varroa, which is a nasty little mite that attaches itself to the bee and also to the larvae, and it can decimate a whole colony. So with my colonies being new last year, I made the decision to treat them in the autumn rather than taking honey, in the hope that they'd come through the winter Varroa-free or as Varroa-free as they can, and be really strong for this season and that really has paid off. To say that we're at the end of winter, this is one of the hives that's still got plenty of stores left. This is the outer frame, which is still more than three quarters full of honey. And the, the next frame in, again, just lots, not so much on that side, but lots of honey on that side. And as you can see, the the hives are full of bees. They're not angry, they're just flying about, giving a little buzz, but they're not attacking me or trying to sting me, they're quite happy. And I'm really glad that I made that choice last year because I've now got 21 happy, healthy hives. But why can't I harvest the honey and treat the bees for Varroa at the same time? Well, it's a really simple answer to that. The strips that we put in the hives have got a chemical, which because the bees are walking over that, it would end up in the honey. We're not allowed to harvest or sell or eat the honey that comes from the hives while they've got Varroa strips in there. So I had to make a choice, either treat them for Varroa or take the honey. And because they were quite new small colonies at the time, it made sense to treat them for Varroa so they could go into the winter nice and strong and as free from these nasty little mites as possible. And that way they come into the spring nice, strong, healthy colonies, which they all have done. And that means, hopefully, they're gonna be busy this summer making lots of honey. The other good thing that's uh, a big positive is the amount of bees coming back with pollen and different colours of pollen which means that there's various sources out there already that they're bringing pollen back for and they need that to feed the baby bees, it's a good source of protein. Well, I was talking about learning new things earlier and I've learned something else today. I've been giving the bees the fondant in just wrapped in cling film and then I score the underneath with this tool, put it on top of the crown board and the bees go and get it. But what I've learned is that when they finished the fondant they actually pull all that cling film down into the hive and try and get rid of it out of the front of the hive. But the problem is is that during the winter we've got the mouse guards on which makes it difficult for them to get anything in or out of the hive like cling film and as you can see it's kind of bunged up the entrance which it can be dangerous because they need to get in and out obviously. So uh, I've taken the mouse guards off anyway uh, but just pulled that cling film out and I think next year I'm just going to use plastic tubs like I did last winter. The 
bees are going to be fine. They know what they're doing and they've got me looking after them. I could do with a me to look after me sometimes. I know you're probably saying, oh, but you've got Sean to look after you. It's, it's different. Sean doesn't look after me. Sean's there for me. There's a difference. Anyway, speaking of Sean, let's go see what he's up to. I've seen the light. You've seen the light? Oh, it's bright. What are you doing? I am putting the frame together. It's just started for the new bench. This is the new bench? New bench. Where have you got the wood from? I've got the wood from the leftovers of Sherlock's Muse. Is that part of it? That's part of so it. It's it not will be. Us, so it's not cost us anything? It's not cost us a penny. And will it be really secure? It will be, be like secure. Hammering hives and stuff. You'll be able to, you'll be able to dance on it. I'll bang my head on the roof <laughs> if I do that. <laughs> so how, how is it supported then? Basically I'm screwing bits of wood to the walls, to that bench, and then I'm going to put legs on it and it's going to come all the way around loads of room and it's a lot lower than your original bench. Cool. So we won't get our make anymore. We won't get our make going too high. Well not from hammering anyway. No. <laughs> nice one. Do you know what don't fill me with confidence about the wiring in this shed, this barn, is where it says electake cable. No, it doesn't say electake. Electake cable. <laughs> This little machine here and this bench is the best thing I've ever bought. We bought it to help, just to help us renovate the house to make things easier. And then of course there was Sherlock's Muse, which it was so helpful in that. Now the bee barn and then eventually the train barn. So yeah, if you're gonna do heavy work, this is the thing to buy. Now I've got the main supports that go across ready to put these on. These is going to be the top of the bench. I've got a few in already over there. Uh, the next thing to do before I start filling all that in is put a main support leg here in the middle. And there it was, done. I'm knackered. <laughs> it's taken me a full day to do it, but it's really, really strong. And it gives us a lot more room than what the old bench does. And this new bench follows the old bench around. So it's all the same level, loads of workspace. And there's plenty of storage underneath for all the stuff we build. You've done a grand job. I did an amazing job. He's done a grand job. He knows how to handle his wood, doesn't he? <laughs> eh? With all the manly tools. You're not allowed to, we're not allowed to be masculine anymore, are we? No. You'll have pecs Ooh. and biceps and triceps like steel. Man handling me and touching He's me. I complain when I don't touch you and then when I do touch you. He knows how to handle his wood. I like a man who knows how to handle his wood. Now, I know some of you will be sat poised with your postcard and your biro ready to write a letter to us. Yeah pulling your Deirdre Barlow neck. How come you can do barn one, but you can't do your train barn? Because barn one's a necessity. Barn one is a necessity. The bees won't stop. The bees will not wait for the builders to come and fix the roof. I've got to do it myself. So like a lot of things in life, we have to take matters into our own hands. So we've just got to move all the supers back over to where they were and just tidy it up. Build some shelves up at the back to put me nails and me tools. And we'll be away building beehives again. We will. Do you know what I write fancy? What? I fancy seven Belgian waffles. Seven? Seven Belgian waffles with melted Mars bar dribbled all over it. Oh, the heart attack waited to happen. We're on a diet. Yeah. We need to get into our wedding costumes. So I want to lose just a couple of inches off my dad bod belly. Mm. And Sean wants a 20 year old bum. <laughs> What was his name? <laughs> you can't say that. Oh, we hope you've enjoyed this little vlog. 
Uh, if you are not already, please subscribe to the channel, give this video a thumbs up, and if you hit the notification bell, YouTube will let you know every time we release a new video. Uh, if you want to support the channel and help us with the bees and the chickens and the owl and the badgers and everything else that we seem to be taking in at the moment, <laughs> Waifs and strays, 20 year olds, then uh, you can get some exclusive content as a reward and some other bits and pieces, early access to the vlogs by joining yeah. us as a Patreon. I post all sorts of rubbish on there. Or a YouTube member. Details are down in the video description. There might be a link up in the corner above Sean's head. Uh, we'll see you next week, probably. Probably. If we've got something to tell you about. Yeah. Uh, if not, join us for Fox's Saturday Live yes. on Saturday. At seven o'clock. Well, Saturday. We say it like it's assum assumed, assum assumpted, assumed. Assumpted. Yeah, it's a new word. Look it up. Uh, but uh, it was Sunday last time, wasn't it? Because I was away. Yeah, we, we, we can play What's in Collins' Bin? What's in Collins' Bin? We can. Uh, we've got a new game, haven't we? What's, what's Sean holding in his hand? <laughs> you think we're joking. Uh, there's a link down in the description for that too. <laughs> uh, I want some Belgian waffle, waffles. Oh. You need to go calm down a little I bit. I do a bit, yes. See you next week. Bye-bye.